Today we have Disney's Frozen. Frozen is a more sympathetic retelling of the children's fairy tale, The Ice Queen. This is Disney's return, sort of, to their classic form. They haven't gone back to hand-drawn animation that's still computer animated, but this one is Disney going back to being a musical. How did that work? some success, some failure. But in this sympathetic retelling of the Ice Queen, the Ice Queen is presented as not being evil, rather she's merely misunderstood. That worked a little bit better than some of the music. Okay, so the main character of the Ice Queen is this princess of the fairy kingdom or whatever it is, and she's presented as being a likable, lonely girl She's the younger sister of the Ice Queen who, for reasons that she doesn't know, she has been cut off from her sister, and despite the fact that they were close when they were really little, they have been kept completely separate from that time until young adulthood. And she's grown up sad and lonely and wanting nothing more than contact with other human beings, her sister especially. The Ice Queen herself, the older sister, is a girl who has essentially the powers of X-Men's The Iceman, but multiplied to fairyland status. She is really, really, really powerful, but she has absolutely no control over her powers, or not as much control as she needs to be safe. And that's why she's been cut off from her sister because in early childhood she hurt her sister and now the parents keep them completely separate and have essentially taught this young woman who is going to grow up to be the future queen they've taught her to be afraid of her powers and to hide her powers from everyone and that is the beginning of the misunderstanding that is the story now there are two male characters in the story as well you have the prince who is the youngest son of i think 12 and he is presented as a love interest sort of and he's an all right character but the problem is this is a musical and the guy playing him well he's probably a better singer than your average person he's not as good a singer as he thinks he is and he goes for some notes that he doesn't hit and goes from, for some harmonies that noticeably do not match. And you will wish he would just stop and just sing flat. Just sing the notes and not try to do the acrobatics because he's vocally, acrobatically clumsy. Um, then you have this kid, uh, I think his name is Kristoff who is an ice vendor. He, the guy playing him, can sing a lot better. Um, I'm not sure if he sings as much, but he sings a lot better. He's also a nice, likable character. Most of the characters in this movie are relatively likable. I don't think there are too many characters that are going to stand out as great Disney characters, but you won't dislike any of them. Um, then, for comic relief, you have a snowman who serves a greater purpose than just the comic relief, although he's good at the comic relief. He is a living symbol of the bond between the two sisters. He's a snowman that was originally built, or he's modeled after the snowman that was originally built on the last day the two sisters ever played together. He's also built on the last day that on the day that the older sister actually hurt her little sister with the powers so he's actually a symbol of their bond and their separation which is interesting um the upside of the movie the upside of the movie is the animation is is what you come to expect from from disney and pixar at this point it's the nobody's broken new ground in a while in terms of animation that may be a technological leap ahead of us maybe a few years but the animation doesn't disappoint. The effects of the ice powers are pretty cool. Um, the direction, the way the film, the film is directed is very good. Um, the, some of the songs 
are good. Some of the songs are really good. Some of the songs are memorable. Um, you might see the usual spattering of songs nominated for various awards down the road for a few of them. Um, the downside is that some of the songs are not as good. There are some songs that have a more modern feel to it. And those songs that are more modern don't actually fit the setting. They don't feel like they come out of the setting because the setting is the storybook past with, you know, horses and carriages and stuff like that. And some of the songs feel like, uh, you know, 70s rock and roll. And that doesn't fit the setting at all. Um, the other downside is every act of the story seems to have a different villain. The there's no one villain to root against throughout the entire film, and whenever you don't have a true villain in a story that isn't just man against nature, it actually is a story with villainy. If the villain keeps changing, the focus keeps changing, and it leaves the film having a sort of a, a status that feels floaty and unfocused. And this film has that. Um, Ultimately, in the end, the film is enjoyable. It's very enjoyable. Um, I am going to give it, it's a solid four stars, mainly because it's fun throughout. There's not a point in the film where you get bored. Um, and I saw this movie in a crowded theater and on a Saturday morning with tons and tons of kids. And I can tell you that I think most of the kids would give this film five stars. So if you're a parent, take that into account. Your kid's going to love this. Five stars. Four kids. Four stars for mom and dad.